And now we are quite close, as we joking in Russia, to the drinking uh, time. But before the drinking time, we have one more panel, which will be also very exciting. And I would like to invite here James, who will introduce you the panel and uh, guests who will join in. Please take the stage, introduce yourself. A great man, also a passion about mobile and a very nice uh, color of your shirt. <laughs> Thank you very much. What a, what a very difficult uh, thing to come and follow Harry's great presentation and, and interesting comments afterwards. So the, the final session is, is around travel and LBS. Um, and we've got a presentation from Foursquare and TripAdvisor. But just prior to that, I, I, I wanted to quickly share um, my journey over, over here to Russia you know, yesterday. So I checked in on my mobile uh, and I flew with Transaero. And the checking experience was pretty, pretty poor. It, it directed me straight to the full website, and eventually I managed to scroll around and find where the mobile checking was. When I checked in, the QR code was so small that you had to had to save as a screenshot and then and then zoom into it. And then when I came to check in, when I came to board the flight, I had to put my phone that way. And because I'd, I'd zoomed in, the orientation changed and, and the QR code moved, so it didn't actually check in. So the mobile check-in, they actually looked at my phone, took the number, and then just manually ticked me off the list. So there's a, there's a lot of challenges in terms of like everything is going mobile. I agree with Harry, one of Harry's first comment before, when he when he came up on the stage. Everything is going mobile, but there are a lot of challenges, particularly with companies who uh, have uh, a lot of legacy system and that they that they, they they've used over many years. Anyway, so I would now like to introduce Charles Burnbaum from Foursquare, who has momentarily disappeared. <laughs> it's just a second ago. Two minutes. I think he's working on his slides. Uh, just out of interest, then, it did for for those of you who travelled over here, did anyone else check in on mobile to their flights? Who, who who's who's checked in on mobile? Maybe tried tried, tried maybe forty percent. Um, okay, so uh, are we nearly there with four square, or has he disappeared again? <laughs> um, one minute. One minute. Okay. Um, I guess a few, a few of the issues that we're going to be talking about in the panel later are things around around um, big data. So, so companies like Foursquare, TripAdvisor, uh, Flow from IM, uh, and uh, Ivan from a Avia Sales. Clearly, these guys are, have, have a huge amount of data from their users. Like TripAdvisor has got some phenomenal figures. <laughs> Charles is finally here. And I will, that segues nicely in because clearly uh, Foursquare have a huge amount of, uh, of, of data points. So I'm going to pass you over now to Charles, who's going to talk about big data and user generated content. Thank you. Just welcome, Charles. I was just working on the headset. Thanks, everybody. Uh, really awesome to be in Moscow. It's my first time in Russia. Um, and it's the first time anyone from Foursquare has been in Russia. Uh, the company just hit four years old. Um, we translated to, into Russian about two years ago uh, and have seen pretty awesome growth here. Uh, I'll speak to some of the numbers, but I think we're going to hit our millionth user in Russia this month. Um, and that's pretty exciting. It's also one of our most active markets uh, in terms of check-ins and tips and venues created. Uh, so it's really awesome to be here. I also want to clarify that the check-ins that you are having a problem with were not my check-ins. Um, those were airline check-ins, uh, if anyone was, was confused at all. So what I want to talk about today is not just Foursquare. I want to talk about um, data and how Foursquare has really become a data company uh, and a search company over the last year or two. Um, and, and it's not that it's a pivot. Uh, a lot of journalists that are at, at times lazy will throw those uh, terms around uh, when we go in a new direction, but it's an evolution. Uh, when we started the company, um, you know, I joined the company three years ago, but when Dennis and Naveen started the company, we had no data. It, it started from scratch and you know, almost like a Wikipedia for places. It's grown to be um, what it is today. So now we have all millions of venues all over the world, and the tips and the photos and everything that exists at these places. So what the service is today is very different than what it was uh, when we first started. Um, and, and I'm gonna talk about that evolution, and I think it's relevant to others, um, and how we've opened up our platform 
uh, to a lot of developers to build off of our data, uh, and not just developers. You know, I've had four or five people come up to me today to show me demos of, of apps that are powered by Foursquare. I, I love seeing nothing more than that. It's just the coolest thing to me. Um, and it's because our data is everywhere. So people are really, it's become the location layer for the internet. Uh, so that's, that's some of the stuff I'm going to talk about. I'm going to start off um, with this video. Uh, try and uh, take a look at these because I want to I wanna highlight um, certain things. So um, I'm going to ask him to hit play again, but what you see here is a day in the life um, of Foursquare visualized in New York City on the left and Tokyo on the right, um, on your right. And what's fascinating about this is we have different colors for the different categories, um, and the streaking is the movement of one individual checking into one place and then checking into another. So that's how this is, and you'll see the time uh, in the top left. So it starts at 3 a.m. and cycles all the way through. Um, before we hit play again, I want to highlight a few things. So this is the island of Manhattan, and you'll see downtown um, is where a lot of people will spend time at night, uh, and midtown is where a lot of people work. And you'll see in the morning, uh, people commute into the city. Uh, and then you'll see in the evening, people will leave uh, back to the suburbs, but downtown will stay pretty lit up uh, because everyone is, is always partying in New York City. Um, in Tokyo, if you pay attention when we hit play again, you'll actually see a map of the subway system because everyone checks into train stations in, in Tokyo. So you'll see the ringed circle of the Tokyo Metro um, light up. And if we could hit play one more time, please. On the video, if we could hit play. Great. All right, so you see the city's dark. Now it's coming to light because it's 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m. In Japan, you'll see the train system that I was talking about. Uh, very dense all over, but as people will leave about 5 p.m., start going home from work, it'll lighten up. The blue categories um, are more nightlife, so you'll see a, a dark spot of blue come up in, in downtown Manhattan, but everyone, this is where my parents live, it's kind of boring up here. Um, <laughs> and, and then you know, Japan, obviously, similar dynamics. The reason I, I like to show this uh, today, um, we could do this for Moscow, for Paris, for Istanbul, for, for Jakarta, um, for Rio, for Sao Paulo, we just have this data um, in most major cities of the world now. Uh, and this is what I want you to kind of walk away with today thinking about when we talk about Foursquare. Uh, people, some people think the check-in is silly. I don't think there's that many people uh, in this group when I checked in today. I think there were like 90 people checked in. So I don't, I'm not going to start with my typical question of who's heard of Foursquare. I think most people know Foursquare here. Um, but we're, we're a data company, and we're trying to take this data, open it up to the entire internet, mobile, web, whatever it may be. Um, you know, who knows, maybe these wearable devices, someday I'm wearing my Nike fuel bag, will be powered by our API, what's happening with glasses. Um, our data is just very valuable. So the check-in generates that data, and we need to keep check-ins coming and, and making sure the user experience is so exciting that people are going to keep checking in. Um, we have three and a half billion check-ins in the database now and still growing between five and six billion a day um, all over the world. So that, that was really um, just, just some numbers to throw out there. Everyone was going to ask me these anyway, so I might as well just put them up there. Uh, these are the numbers we've shared publicly. Three and a half billion check-ins to date um, in four years. Uh, over 50 million places you know, we started with a couple hundred places in New York City, and now there's 50 million places all over the world in our database um, that have been geocoded and, and have a lot long, and, and that's what people are using to power. There's over 50 million public photos that people have made publicly available that, that you could share. We have over 33 million registered users now, um, and 25 million tips. Uh, I said over five million check-ins a day. Um, one million claim merchants is an important number. Uh, I'm gonna get questions about that too, is what is our business model? How are we making money? That's our customer. The user is not our customer. The merchant is our customer. We're trying to build um, cutting edge, location-based advertising that hasn't existed before. Um, we're not competing 
uh, with anyone uh, directly on that. We're competing for the same ad dollars, but we feel like we have a different, um, a different product to offer merchants. And another little known fact, I, there might be some in the room here, we have over 30,000 super users. And when I mentioned uh, Wikipedia before, these are people that uh, we've entrusted to curate the database. So they'll go in and make edits. If there's duplicates of Gypsy across, uh, across the, the river, they'll merge them together for us. They're always taking care of the database in their home market, and it's an incredibly valuable asset uh, for us. And we, you know, we send them swag, we give them uh, you know, unique badges, and we do a lot for our super users because they do a lot for our platform. So in Russia, just to give you some, some numbers about this market in particular, uh, we're gonna hit one million users this month. Um, incredibly active, have generated 260 million check-ins in Russia alone. Um, and that number is you know, it's almost two and a half million places that are in our database in this country alone. So you know, as I, as I talked about, there's startups that are building on top of our data. These are the top checked into places in Russia. I thought it was an interesting list. Um, I mentioned Gypsy. I was so curious to see that at the top of the list. I went there last night. That's why I brought it up. Um, and when I was there last night, there were about 100 people. It was pretty quiet. And 50 people were checked in. Uh, so it was pretty cool. And uh, these are some other places. This is the food and nightlife category. I thought people would find this interesting. Um, and, and we can cut the data a lot of different ways. So just uh, we just learn a lot. And, and in Russia, um, we don't have any presence here uh, physically. We do have a small team in London that, that will manage uh, partners here. Um, so if anybody is interested in doing something with Foursquare, whether you're an agency, a brand, a merchant, um, or would like, as a developer, would like to use our API, feel free to reach out and, and I'll put you in touch with the right people. But this is really what I wanted to talk about is that data and APIs. Um, I was talking to someone uh, before earlier today that you know, I, I went to business school in the United States and when I go back to talk there now, I always say, understand APIs because this is what allows us uh, to do partnership business. Um, we can't really get every idea that the whole world has for Foursquare into our product. So what we decided to do from the very beginning, this is not new, um, we opened it up. We said, all right, here we have one million check-ins and a few thousand venues. Whoever wants to play with it in New York and in San Francisco can build an app and have it be powered by Foursquare. Over the last year, though, it's exploded. Once we hit those metrics that I showed you on two slides ago, you have Twitter using it in Vine, you have Instagram, American Express, Airbnb, Uber, Path, uh, Flickr, Waze. It's, it's the location layer for all of these services. Um, because it's global, because it's open, uh, we don't charge um, at a pretty healthy rate limit. We do have partnerships where we're generating licensing fees from our API um, when people need it. Uh, in, a, in a more bulk fashion. Maybe they need a whole snapshot of our data. Um, and this is people using it for the venues, the photos, the tips, the ability to check in on your service, like on PATH. Um, so you may want to have check-ins, they use Foursquare check-ins. Um, in that way, same with Instagram. Uh, so you know, this, this has been uh, an evolution recently for us, and we see over 100 million active users are engaging with Foursquare in some way because of our API. So we might only have 33 million registered Foursquare users, but over 100 million people are engaging with Foursquare data with branding powered by Foursquare um, every day. Uh, so oh, that's at each month, I'm sorry. Uh, and we have 75 million API calls a day from, from all of our partners. Just a couple of screenshots of those integrations and, and what that looks like. And, and I'm sure there's a lot of developers in the audience that are thinking about this too. So um, just in terms of growth, uh, and you'll see Russia is actually uh, one of the slivers that we always cut out because it's a pretty big market for us now. Um, you see this is venue growth by country. Uh, what I find very interesting here is you'll see on the bottom is the US, which is flattening out a little bit because it's saturation. <laughs> We've, we have all the venues, so it has to be new places opening up now um, for that number to grow. But in growth markets like Brazil, Turkey, Russia, Indonesia, it's still uh, exponential. Um, and we're very excited to see this because it's not just about check-ins. It's about the data exhaust on Foursquare that people leave behind uh, that makes it a valuable company. I, I wanted to share this too because I think also data can tell interesting stories 
So what you'll see here is um, these are three different types of places in New York City. One is coffee, one is a hot dog stand, and one is ice cream. Uh, and you'll notice there's different spikes in activities at these places based on the times of day that people typically go to these places. The hot dog joint will light up late at night and most people go on the weekend. Um, but during the day or in the morning, they're never going there. Uh, the coffee place, Gorilla Coffee, uh, which is the blue line, you'll see spikes in the mornings. Um, and then a, a lot of people out and out on the, on the weekend. Um, so, you know, just very interesting, interesting stories that the data tells. And what we do in the app is search. So we, we allow you to, to do Foursquare Explore, um, which is our bread and butter product. You see what's happening around you, and it's powered by all the data. So when I'm in Moscow and I take out search, it's going to give me different recommendations than James because we check into different places in London and in New York. I might go to Starbucks every day, and he might go to the artisanal local coffee shop. So that will power the recommendation. So he'll get a more specific recommendation for coffee here in Moscow. Um, and that's what we're trying to do with, with search. Um, our business model, it's all about the merchant. Uh, you know, Best Buy is an example that, that I just put up here. Um, that's a big electronics retailer with uh, you know, hundreds and, and well, 1,400 locations in this case. They're paying us advertising dollars to come up in our search results, just like it works on Google um, at the top of those results. We call it promoted products. Um, and I can speak to that a little bit more in, in the question and answer. So I, I'm, I was just told I'm, I'm out of time. Um, so I wanted to say thank you. I hope that's right. I looked it up. Uh, and you know, reach out to me on Twitter uh, if you have any any questions. Want to be connected? Um, probably the best way because uh, I probably don't have enough business cards for everyone in the room. Um, so that's really what I wanted to talk about today, just to give that sense for location-based services and the data and how relevant that is. Um, and I think question time. Okay, thanks, Joe. Thank Far off one very quick question. What's, what's the weirdest place someone's checked into? Space. Space. Um, there were some uh, U.S. astronauts uh, last year that were checking in from the space shuttle. Uh, they had Wi-Fi, and I think we let the, the GeoCheat algorithm um, do its thing there, really. but that was pretty cool. Yeah. Cool. I'm sure there's loads of questions on the floor, but if not, I'm going to kick them off. Sorry about curiosity. Curiosity, check out. Check in. А у вас был с собой Дани Чикем, когда вы когда отправились с Марса был Чикем? Hello, my name is Alex, and we develop a game for Foursquare. It's a um, a game where you can buy and sell your favorite venues across the world, and when somebody checks in in that venues, landlord you cash. And it's not landlord; uh, okay. it's a cash square. Okay. We developed this over a year, and I would like to ask if we can increase the API limits to four square. Yeah, it's a good it's question. Possible. It's a good question. So I, you know, I talked about the API. Thank you. Um, there are forty thousand developers using our API now. Uh, some of them are ones that are on that slide, the big ones. Some of them are teams like yours that are all over the world and they go to our website, they agree to the terms. Part of those terms is the rate limits. Um, typically, uh, you'll want to reach out to our API team, API at Foursquare, and say we're having those issues. And basically, all they'll need is um, you'll have to give us good attribution and show them how you're uh, re representing Foursquare, powered by Foursquare at the top, and uh, linking back to our venues in certain ways. There'll, there'll, there'll be steps that you need to do to do that. But just uh, just reach out to me and we'll, we'll follow up with more details. Okay, I think we're, we're going to leave the questions there because Charles is going to take part in the panel later. So let's just give Charles a massive round of applause. Thank you, Charles. All right.